what is up everybody and welcome back to yet another live stream episode 140 you heard correct that is 140 consecutive weeks of the camera junkie live stream and as always i thank you for taking the time and spending it here with me time being our most precious commodity if it's your first time here welcome my name is Lewis, also known as Mr. Camera Junkie, where I remind you to upgrade your skills before your gear. And please be sure to introduce yourself within the chat so that you can get the nice Camera Junkie crew welcome. And as tradition goes around here, first thing we do is check in on the crew and see exactly who's here. All right, we got Mr. Scott Rogers stopping in. Yes! Look at that. The comments look good right off the bat. All right. <laughs> We're nailing it. And he's got the cool shades on. How you doing, Scott? We also have Paul Duncan, Mr. Moderator, saying hey to the fam. Saying hello to Parker Jennings, who's also saying hello to everyone. How are you doing, Parker? Welcome again. All right. He says, Paul, we miss you on Doc's stream. Yes, we did, but he had a IRL birthday party. So yeah, IRL in real life birthday party event. But we're also glad that to have him here because we get the late night shift here on the camera junkie stream. All right. We also have Luis in the house saying hello to folks. Nano is in the house tech for your needs. And Kevin Cox. What's up, Kevin? Haven't seen you in a couple of weeks. Nice to have you here again. All right. And uh, with that being said, everybody's getting acquainted. Today's topic today is the, the latest rabbit hole that I've fallen down. And it's taken me back to my Canon days. Uh, so I just want to share with you because even though I'm not sure exactly how or if at all I will implement this at all, it has totally just completely just expanded my mind on the possibilities of what we can do with devices that we have already. So I, I think it was a birthday party that he was at Kevin not that it was his birthday so if I said that incorrectly my bad he was at a birthday event in real life so he was at a birthday party and uh, he was partaking with friends so I think that's maybe over and that's why he's hanging out with us correct me if I'm wrong Paul but I believe that's what it is all right going back to it Today's topic is 3D printed cameras. Now, I had spoken about my interest in getting into 3D printing. <laughs> you see, there we go. We got confirmation. Paul says, not mine yet. The 21st. <laughs> All right. So now we know we got to mark that on our calendars. Okay. So. I have mentioned before here on the live stream that I've always had interest in 3D printers and getting into, you know, like the things that are possible within videography and photography using 3D printers as another tool. And like I always say, upgrade your skills. That's a skill that I've always wanted to dabble into. But with my current space, I know the limitations and a lot of it has to do with the open air ventilation system that I would need to have to, you know, like expel the gases from some of these chemicals that I don't have the availability to do that right now. So I myself have not dabbled into 3D printing, but the rabbit hole that I fell down is some people who have taken that into account. Let me see. I'm just reading these comments here. It says, I was out of town. Kevin says, um, for a Taylor, Taylor Swift concert the last couple of weeks, it's been crazy. Much time, proper environments to take in the streams. That's cool, man. 
but just know that you know when you're not here you're missed play we we feel it he said i knew it was uh some point this month either way happy early birthday he's saying that to paul and he's saying thanks for the well wishes and uh okay and albert's also in the house saying 3d printing until i grow up <laughs> right but um getting back into it there's a lot of things that i had already seen when it came to photography and the 3d printing world like basically creating your own um, extensions for mirrorless cameras to be able to mount vintage lenses like you know the m42 mount and different focal lengths and uh, flange distances that you would need to actually optimize the older lenses to the you know sensors on these new mirrorless cameras um, I've also seen people taking apart disposable cameras and uh, utilizing the lens that is there for photography and creating one of these like fish eyed or better said um, lens cap type of lenses where they're just 3D printing and when it gets to the point that like it would require the lens, they pause the print place the lens there and then continue to allow the 3d printer to mold around it to lock it in place and then they're able to utilize that as a lens cap slash lens that they can use so i've seen all of these things and like i said always has intrigued me but the latest iteration that i've gotten into is 3d printing cinema cameras and the functionalities that you get out of it which is like it literally just blew my mind so what i came across is called the m light m dash light and what it comes down to is something that I used way back in the day that has just now spawned this new generation of 3D printed cinema cameras. So let's see if I can go to kind of like my share screen. All right, there we go. Some of you might be familiar with this, but this is called Magic Lantern. So Magic Lantern is a software that came across from the underground Canon community that wanted to make the most and get the most out of all of their digital equipment. Now, this is something that I utilized myself on an older version of my Canon cameras, which is what has made Canon so very popular going back all the way from the Canon um, I believe it's the M5 Mark II, no, the 5D Mark II M something. I'm mixing it up with today's um, topic. So what that software did or um, exploit, it was basically a hack or how some people like to term it uh, a jailbreak. That jailbreak, what it did was it gave you full functionality to your uh, 5D Mark two allowing you to record in 1080 raw video without any like 29 59 limitations it gave you the ability to record in log um, raw with very good bit rates and that was just game changing which really propelled the canon market and all of their digital cameras to sell like hotcakes because that's also around the same time where youtube or the quality in youtube videos really started to excel because of exploits like this in magic lantern but I have since moved on from my Canon days and when I moved over from Canon to Sony because Sony had all the things that you wanted to jailbreak your Canon camera to do right out of the box, it was a very easy transition and with uh, adapters like the one that I have, the I believe I have the, oof, I forgot the name of my adapter. 
oh man, because I know it's not the Sigma, but there's a variety of different adapters that you could just attach to your mirrorless camera, in this case, the Sony, and then it would give you the ability to attach Canon's old lenses, which is what I used to transition while I changed over all of my lenses from Canon to Sony only. And now it's, it's kind of funny, but I've totally fallen in love with the, with the Zeiss lenses, which is particular to the Sony line, which is why I love Sony cameras. And I don't see me moving any type of system from here on out, unless I'm able to bring over those lenses one way or another, but I digress. No, I see what you're saying, Kevin. It's not the Viltrox. It's funny. I could pull it out, but, um, my God, cause there was so many, but funny that the one that I got actually works perfectly with this. Oh, wait, that's the wrong one. Wrong with this camera here, the a seven R two. I'm not going to get stuck on it, right? It, it's, it's one of these and maybe it'll, it'll get to me, but if not, I can go pull out my bag and you know, we can get to it and I'll let you know exactly which brand it is, but it's not really the point. The point is that I was able to utilize my Sony cameras and haven't really been back to really touch too much on the Canon side. And while I scroll down here real quick, right? I will see that they've continued to iterate on the process and bring in a variety of different cameras utilizing a similar type of exploit in it. So now we have a variety of different cameras and you can see that are already available and the others that are actually the ones that are saying supported and then some that are in progress, which means that the community is still thriving in the exploits of these cameras. And one of the biggest ones, the most successful ones is the one on this little camera that is very unsuspected, which is the EOS M. So this camera right here, the one that says, what is it? And is telling you what Magic Lantern is doing right now. Um, on the EOS 5D Mark II, this wasn't something that ran directly from the card itself. It You actually had to like flash the firmware to unlock all of the features. So it basically would render your camera... Um, out of warranty, even though the, at, at the time that people were doing it to those cameras, the majority of them were already out of warranty. So it was kind of like a no brainer, but it would void any type of warranty. If you were to flash over firmware from the original manufacturers, that's just kind of like commonplace, right? Common sense sort of say, well, with that, now you have a different type of exploit that runs directly from the memory card. So right from the memory card, you don't have to run like or really have to flash your camera and risk it or make it void any type of warranty um, by using this Magic Lantern software directly from the chip. Now, now, with this being said, the features that were given to this little M, uh, the M, yeah, I think it was called the EOS M, right? This gave it the ability to shoot 14 bit, listen to what I just said, 14 bit raw at 1080. And it's such a high quality image that even at the lower grade, hypothetically of 1080, the 14 bit digital signal that's coming off of the sensor, it gives you so much to work with. And the colors are so rich that it is giving such a high quality cinematic type look out of an old camera and sensor. So now let me click over here. And just to give you a little bit of an illustration, you can find this camera right now 
from Japan for $200. And that's what this camera is going for. Or even less because if you find it on auction, 64 with $35 of shipping. So you're looking at still under a hundred bucks. So if you're someone like me that loves to tinker, this really is the rabbit hole that I fell down because I disassemble cameras to repair them quite frequently to the point that disassembling a working camera to make the most out of it is kind of like a no brainer to me. So if I were to be able to find something like this at a very extremely low cost, this could be something that I would love to mess around with because of this reason. Um, having this older type camera, this EOS M, as we're seeing here, run 14 bit raw video codecs, 1080p and dump that to a memory card it can be done through the magic lantern you know software or exploit but what it's going to do is that it's going to overheat in no time because you're asking all of these components to that are really tightly packed up into this setup right here to work overtime or overdrive so to speak to do all of these high bitrate codecs and to get the most out of it so what has the community come and done well they've come and they've met this camera in the middle they've disassembled this camera and with the power of 3d printing one second because Aiden's gotten into some stuff that he hasn't he's not supposed to so one quick second <laughs> Aiden Thank you. <laughs> I just find that funny. You know, when kids are too quiet, you're like, wait, what's going on here? All right. So going back to it, the community and the 3D printing community, what they have done to this point is that they've taken that next step and they've met this camera in the middle. They know that because you're asking it to do so much, plus the battery size on it is very inadequate because the camera was never designed to do anything remotely like this, is where we come across with this new thing, which is the M light. Now the M light is a 3D printed cinema camera and it has everything that the M doesn't have. It has a built-in fan to keep the internal components cool at all times. It has space for a hard drive to record directly to it, has a new mount for a, a Sony, uh, I believe the NP batteries, I believe they are remember yeah the NP these guys right here so these are the this is the NP F550 but they have this exact mount in a variety of like widths or girths and that really determines the amount of um battery that you can get out of it which is a more cinema camera or handy cam camera type uh, as you can see the image that i'm displaying here it is all tweaked out it is all tweaked out with a tilt to handle it's got like external like um hard drives connected to it and the ability to connect the same exact lenses so this is where i really was just like 
wow, they've taken it to the next level because the purpose that it's being used right now is as a very cheap and inexpensive cinema crash cam. So if you've never heard the term crash cam, let me touch on that real quick. A crash cam is those cameras that are known that they're going to be sacrificed but you sacrifice them because you want the shot. This is a camera that you would place inside of a car that is going to explode in some movie, but you want to get the image out of it, knowing that the explosion is going to physically take out the camera. So they rig it up to be able to record and take the brunt, knowing that it's probably not gonna be salvageable, but the footage is, so they'll be able to retrieve that and use it. And that is the purpose of the crash cam. Like if they're gonna, you know, have a car roll over, right? They'll put that camera within that car because they're not gonna sacrifice their super ridiculous $100,000 you know, area Alexa camera to be crashed while the car's being flipped over. So now to be able to take a camera, even though temporarily that you can find on eBay for a hundred dollars, maybe two, 3d print this chassis to give it everything that it's missing and then be able to sacrifice it in a crash is just next level but at the same time let's say you had this camera you're able to utilize something like this and have a much more professional looking cinema camera if you were doing this for a job um, something like this is going to look a lot better than going in with a you know rigged out um, type of camera that is a hybrid camera no matter how it looks to have the ability to attach an actual cinema camera or lens rails and the whole thing and have it in such a compact little system is super, super impressive. And this is exactly what I had, like I've been researching on because this is next level. This um, <clears throat> has everything that it, like I said, it's missing. So let me see if I can get to a point to show a bit of the construction because this is, it really is next level. Oh, okay. I have YouTube premium It's just whenever I do displays like this, I do it in an incognito window. So sorry for the ads. Okay. But I basically just wanted to actually just demonstrate and show another diagram of what is actually being done because this was completely thought out and the people that I'm going to talk about right now have been working on this design for over a year. And if you're interested in even something like this, give them the shout out because I believe until September, you have the ability to purchase this for a couple hundred dollars. It's got the entire kit. It's already 3D printed. And then all you would have to do is basically find the internals and assemble it yourself. That is a possibility. Or if you don't have the camera already, right? Me, I don't have this camera, but it is really intriguing because Unfortunately, the title of this video says it's over and it's because that they're not going to be doing or expanding upon this line. So I believe until September is your last opportunity and I'm scratching my head of I'm like, I might pull the trigger just to have the, the 3D printed housing and, you know, even if it's in hopes of getting the camera body. Even if not, I think this is such almost like a monumental um, thing that they're doing here that I like. I would like to support it either way. But let's see if that'll actually end up happening for me. But it is super interesting because they have really done a lot of work. So let me see if I can get to a point here where 
Yeah, as you can see, he's demonstrating that you can kit this out with a variety of different additional pieces, handles, and yeah, you see, um, Albert, I agree with you. He says it's an attractive camera build. That's the really cool thing. Like it looks good, right? I think so myself. And it's just, this is right up my alley. And I had to share this with you guys because this is like super exciting. This is what being creative really means to me. Like, you know, we all create content and things like that, but the, the people who excel is like, you have to give them their flowers when they, when they take this to the next level, because it is just super amazing to me, at least. Um, so as you can see, there's this little section right here, this little slanted thing that we're seeing at a 40, that's an additional piece that allows you to take the, the LCD that's on the back and bring it up to you at a 45 degree angle and add like a little lens hood so that you're getting the best visuals built in. Um, on top of that, it's, it is 3d printed, so it's very lightweight. And, you know, as a Sony shooter, this, this is like super cool to me that, I, like I said, I'm really thinking about seeing if this is something that I just want to mess around with, because I think this is something that is gonna, what's the word that I'm trying to explain? Like, this is monumental. This is something that, that so much is going to come from this point right here so many different cameras and now i don't only see this for canon right i see that the magic lantern is what has baby sparked this version of cinematic 3d printed you know camera housings but to be able to take a variety of different cameras and apply the same aspects to them. I, I just, I'm thinking about my actual Sony cameras, Nikon cameras, a bunch of different cameras like that, and giving them the, the tools that they need or, or the things that they were lacking and missing and applying them through a 3D print so that you can get the most out of it. I think this is super cool. I can't wait to hear what you guys think about this. Um, let's go back to the chat real quick to see exactly what you guys are saying. Kevin says, this feels like a very deep and complex rabbit hole. Stay away from <laughs> Okay, so uh, Albert's got a question. It says, out of context question, how is the A7 III for a second streaming camera? That one should be fine. You know, if you could get a good deal on it. Um, yeah. There's so many things that you can do with it. Um, I believe that that one with a dummy battery or through a trickle charge, you should be able to use it like for hours on end for live streaming. So that should be just fine. And the image quality is great. That one actually, yeah, four, I believe it has full width like sensor 4K. So you should be fine. Kevin says, wow, this is cool. I wonder if they would take the uh, T5i and make it into one of these. But you see, that's exactly my point, Kevin. Like, I feel that this is just the beginning because people are just going to take their favorite cameras and say like, oh, I wish I would use it like that and now be able to kind of reverse engineer through SolidWorks or whatever you know, CAD program that you could be utilizing and add simple like aspects like this. Um, the one that I showed you that I just mentioned, this M light actually has a Noctua fan in it. And if 
you're not familiar with that oh, excuse me if you're not familiar with that name uh noctu is actually like the leaders in uh pc fans for pc you know internals they have a very particular offset color which their fans are not really the most attractive it's like beige with a hint of brown or brown accents but their functionality is so above and beyond the like the next competitor that people just downright will just use the brown fans because they work that much better it's just like hey you know what and it's become a staple and that's what's on the internal of this m light to make sure that all the internals of this eos m stay cool at all times so it's super cool because you're giving it like i said once again like the best of what it's missing right like oh you need cooling let's give you the best fan that is made to cool it off and built it right in um it's just such a cool concept uh, i'm having a lot of fun digging into it just a little bit more and more Yep, and Albert says that it's an attractive build. Yeah, it um that one was 3D printed, the one that I was just showing, like with a white filament, so that it looks kind of like the red ghost cameras, I believe that's what they're called. The the ghost series, which is one of the newer red cameras, so that it would fit right in within, you know, that workflow. Like you would see that on a set, and if you did not know that it was 3D printed you wouldn't know that it was 3d printed it says yeah the shape and the rigging style is nice and clean yeah it reminds me of like the z cam which has also been you know very famous for just being a block and everything being external but this is also cool because even if you don't fully kit it out it still has a space for the lcd and everything and all the buttons so that you can get to all the menus within this little box and it's, it's really interesting because lightweight and most importantly the that 14 bit color codex that's why i had mentioned before i go you know going from 8 bit to 10 bit is like so dramatic when it comes to your final color grade on the footage that you could be recording and going from like 10 to 14 it's almost like two times that jump so that's it's really really nice does agree this is exciting timeless truths welcome to the stream kevin also says i'm sure you can find a local maker group that would be willing to help and bring these dreams into fruition without needing to have a 3d printer in your space that that is true but we also have the ability like through m light to just buy this and if i have it on the shelf it could be a talking piece for the time being and then maybe run across something like a hundred dollar ebay find right it's possible it says it would be a challenge best to work with the terms while building it out it says best to work in teams while building it out. Well, that's what these guys have done. They've actually like they've gotten in, you know, in contact with people that are like really good in that field. So it's it's very um, it's very interesting. That video that I was just highlighting basically was breaking the entire thing down from who they got in contact, how long, because they've been in SolidWorks or like their CAD system for like over a year, you know, like reiterating. And this is like kind of version 2.5 or something like that, but it's like the, the, the working model. And Kevin, yeah, he says he has a T5i from Canon sitting in my drawer. That was his first video camera. So let's do neon orange or gold or some other fun colors. That's also very true because in 3D printing, you can do anything. And not only that, have you seen the, the filament fades? Because that would be super cool if you had a, a camera that like started at the bottom purple, 
fades to white and then goes to red or something like that and have like that color blend right there i've seen some really cool things done through 3d printing it says collaboration yeah that would be really cool but with that being said that's actually gonna bring me basically to this week's cities ga or channels that I think you should go and watch is actually the one that we were just peeking in on. So coming back here is this man, I M C E. And this is the spot to actually get all the information that I have just quickly run through because he is the one and uh, through his connections is what was able to create this now he's got a video here from a couple weeks ago that says uh, it's a 3d print gear giveaway not really sure but as you can see 14-bit raw crash crash cam and a variety of different things but you know the way that i see it is that it just really has opened my mind to the things that i would want so let's say for instance i were to take a camera that i think works really well you know like my a6100 and disassemble it to see what i can do with the 3d print but then I would also be thinking about the things that I would want out of that camera. So I would probably build in a spot where I would just, you know, kind of quietly click in a Rode Wireless Go microphone, right? And that wa Rode Wireless Go is just now going to have a specific slot to like live within this little box at the same time so that it could be connected to that camera and uh you know the so many different things I, that's why i was just having so much fun just like researching this because on top of it just educating myself on this it also just really just to me starts flexing that creative muscle to start thinking how could i do this and put my own twist onto it right how would i make it just right for me but this is the channel this week's city's god channels that i think you should go and watch um and i wish i knew a little bit more about it but as you can see from what i just gave a quick overview he's also giving like a tutorial on the eos m and the magic lantern so that you can educate yourself a little bit more if this is something that you even want to look into but you see like you see i hadn't even seen that but that's exactly what i was thinking like these cameras that are super popular which are um the the black magic you know the black magic pro 6k cameras and the one thing that it's missing is that it's a autofocus so to be able to take their, well, to me, their clunky design to making the cameras like this wide, looking like an old Sega Game Gear or Nomad, right? And to be able to rehouse those internals, right? And maybe even put like a V-mount battery, right? Where Or, or something that you could attach a, a D-tap to that and have that built into a more compact box type cinematic where it might require you to connect an external monitor but you'd be using one anyway so you know like there's a lot of possibilities into these types of ideas because you can take what you dislike from the system and just put it aside or fix what's missing so that was kind of what i was going to touch on but that's this week's city's go channels that i think you should go and watch and it's uh i m c e it's all caps so i would just say it like that i don't think it's a name i do believe it's an abbreviation but that's this week's city's go
there we go all right let me go ahead and check you guys out so i just subscribed yeah definitely um it's it's really cool to keep track into that but with that being said guys i'm gonna give you a little bit of time to see if you have any questions about this or anything at all as always i just want to thank you for taking the time and you know hanging out here with me this is something that i wanted to share with you guys because this is like i'm i'm surprised i can almost guarantee you that this is something that i would have fallen into if i was doing 3d printing in the first place because i would have been looking at cameras like the sony a5100 right which is a sufficient camera but lacks things like that like a viewfinder and kind of would fall just right in place for a rehousing of sorts and having that name to it right to rehouse a camera and the cool thing is that the, that the weight distribution is still um, robust by still utilizing the same camera mounts and having the ability to just extract that from it and having an interchangeable lens system and you know let's say a new design or a new idea of something newer comes out and you want to think about it well all you have to do is 3d print it and go ahead and build it and it's just next level and with just my knowledge of 3d printing and the possibilities of what people do um i've seen people making you know magnetic mounts for devices like the stream decks right and what they do is that they print right like half of the system and when it dries it already has like the preset holes for the magnets and how they want to be placed so then they would place those into the mold and then press another you know like 3d print on top of it which will then kind of seal everything in place and encompass magnets within the inside and to have that type of mentality to be like building these things like as they're being layered on and being able to attach and add so many different things to house different internals is just i don't know I, this was just something that i just had to share with you guys i really do hope that you enjoyed it albert says um you're so dedicated lewis thank you for researching and sharing knowledge hey i'm sharing with you what i what i'd be doing anyway and that's why i say guys i have to thank you all the time because you guys are what makes this so much fun this is what i'd be do this is what i do on my off time right like when i just will say hey you know what i got some time for me that it's not work and it's not required with aiden or anything like that and instead of playing a video game or doing anything else i will then research the things that i'm interested in get some information and kind of you know educate myself because I'm a lifelong learner, right? I'm always looking for what's new, what's the latest trend. And this is something that like once it hit my radar, I was like, oh, such so well executed that you got to give them their props. So everyone, with that being said, thanks again for taking the time. Take care of yourselves and each other. And if you haven't really gotten the drift, this has been episode 140. You heard correctly. That's 140 consecutive weeks of the Camera Junkie live stream without skipping a beat. And I got to thank you all for hanging out here with me. Next week, we're going to be doing it all over again. All over again, right here, same time, same place, Camera Junkie YouTube channel at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every week. And we'll be rocking out to episode 141. <sighs> Let's do the air horns. 141 next week. And I can't wait to see all of your smiling faces right here while we do it all over again. See you next week. Talk to you. Oh, that's right. Kevin, thanks for reminding me. If you haven't done so already, please hit that like button. It goes a long way and is always appreciated. Everyone, take care of yourselves and each other, and I will see you 
next time. Talk to you.